I think the thing that I love about Paul's story mm-hmm. is that the past doesn't disqualify what so God's going to do. Mm-hmm. All right, y'all, thanks for being here. That's, <laughs> that's like mic drop. Mic drop. <laughs> Hey everybody, I'm Lindsay. And I'm Suzanne. And welcome to the Find and Follow podcast, where our goal is to help you engage your faith outside of Sunday. So we're kicking off a brand new series. It's called Pure Gospel, which is um, just a journey we're taking through the book of Romans over the next couple of months. And we're joined here today by our friend, Stuart Venter. Stuart, we're so glad you're here. Welcome, Stuart. Glad to be here. Stuart, tell us who you are. Well, um, we'll get to that. (laughs) The deeper question of who I am yes. later, right? But my name's Stuart, and I'm the worship pastor here at New City, and I've been w- married to Ashley since 2010, and we have two boys, Elliot and Elijah, 11 and 4. That's awesome. great. Um, what do you do for fun? When you're not at work. When I'm not what at are work. What are you doing? Um, I really like to be outside, um, so anything... Yard work. Yard work. I like yard work. Oh, that's great. We do a lot of that. Good for you. Yeah, anything outside, to be honest. That's nice. Very good. Well, good. Well, thank you for being here. So um, you alluded to this just now in your intro, but if someone were to ask you, Stuart, who are you? Much like I just did. (laughs) (laughs) Like, how do you answer? What do you say? It's tricky in the the world we live in because we we all, we want to go first to, this is the things that I do or this is my job, or even like this is my family, Um, and we wrap up our identity in those things um, when really those are really just kind of side things Mm -hmm. um, because our our identity is tied to whether we are are known by God and followers Mm -hmm. of Jesus um, or we're following our own way. So, and I I, I tend to err on the side of, you know, I'm a follower of Jesus because I feel like that language is a little bit easier to, um, you know, understand, but also in our, in our culture, Mm -hmm. Christian Mm -hmm. is, is all, is an adjective too. You have like Christian music, you have Christian art. So it's like, let's, let's talk about what we're actually talking about here. And that to me is that I follow Jesus. Mm, I like that language. I think even now saying you're a Christian can be, um, like really politically, divisive in some ways. I don't know if that like makes no, sense. It does make sense to me. I mean, when they asked the question in the sermon, like, do you identify as a Christian? And I was like, um, I want people to know that I'm a Christian by my love for them. Mm. Mm. But cool. sometimes I don't want to necessarily put a big cross around my neck or, um, say, yes, I am a Christian because of the baggage for mm. our culture today. Mm-hmm. So I was like, Oh, actually that felt a little rough mm. to me. Like I was like, mm. ouch, maybe I need to identify more, be okay with identifying as a Christian, but it's a good word. I f- feel like there's more explanation yeah. mm. that's needed. Yeah. So I like that follower of Jesus. Mm-hmm. That's good me too. Explanation. Um, what does it mean to be a follower of Jesus for you? Like when you say that? Well, I think it's a minute by minute um, evaluation of what I'm living for. Um, I think we, you know, we, we, we always at, at, at every moment have a, a path that we're mm-hmm. choosing and it's either the path of life and it's the, or it's the path of death and destruction. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's not that single event, you know, when I was 12, mm-hmm. that yeah. this marks my, the beginning of my journey. It was that, but it's so much more of a, um, hour by hour. How do I, how do I live out the, the, the faith that I'm, professing, mm-hmm. um, by loving people, um, by serving people, mm-hmm. by putting others before myself, um, those demonstrative things that you're talking about, yeah. loving people, um, is, is how you, you know, evaluate mm-hmm. how, yeah, how, what does it mean to be a Christian? You right. Know? Yeah. That's really good. Thank you. Okay. Let's dive into, um, the Bible for a second, <laughs> the actual literal Bible, because Stuart has one here on the table. Yes. And Gabe, um, yesterday um, morning at Matthews, and I don't, I'm not sure if Chris did this at South Park, but he really talked about the power and the significance of studying from an actual Bible, hmm. um, not just the Bible app. So the Bible app's super convenient, and I love using that. But he talked about actually studying from a Bible. Um, would love to hear your thoughts about that. And then what do you use? Um, so you see you've got this nice little study Bible here. Yes. Um, and I, I completely echo that usage of a actual Bible, mostly because we, we spend so much time 
yeah. on a device. So mm-hmm. I think it's great to to reference something, mm-hmm. um, or if you need to just kind of look up something, you know, on the fly, that's great. But there's so many. It's a, it's an avenue for distraction because if I get on my phone, even with the greatest intention of reading the Bible, I'm going to think, oh, there was that one thing that I was going to check. Let's see mm-hmm. if that Amazon order is going to come today. You know, and the mm-hmm. next thing you know, it's just like, yes. you know, I spent two minutes on the Bible app and 17 minutes on Amazon. Um, so this is a little less distraction. So I do want to take just a moment to kind of back up and just talk about, you know, why we're studying the Bible mm-hmm. in the first place. Mm-hmm. And I think there's there's an important aspect of if we want to know who God is and what his voice sounds like, we have to study the scriptures and not just as a um, intellectual pursuit or, you know, to just to acquire a bunch of knowledge, but it's, it's to get to know the person of God mm-hmm. through story, um, through, you know, principles, through all the ways that God speaks to us through the scriptures. And, and, and we we're, we're missing out on so much of who God is if we don't mm-hmm. study the word. And it's more than just reading, you know, there are, there are portions of scripture that are, that are easy to just kind of pick up and read and say, oh, you know, First Peter, yeah. it's very kind of do this, don't do this, or James. Mm-hmm. But there's, there's certain aspects or, or certain um, portions of Scripture that are just really dense. Mm-hmm. So it takes, mm-hmm. uh, you know, you really have to sink your teeth in. Um, so it's a, it's a worthy study. Um, so to, to answer your question about what I use, um, I think using multiple translations is really important. I think we, you, if you grew up in the church, you probably have a version that mm-hmm. you memorized scripture in as a, as a kid, um, or maybe it was your first Bible in college or something like that. So that's kind of your, your home base. But it's really helpful to read multiple versions and kind of get a, a wider view of, of what the, the scripture is, is saying. So I, I'll read the message, which is a great kind of paraphrased yeah. version, um, the ESV, which is a little bit more literal, NLT, which is kind of in the middle, um, and even I kind of grew up with the NIV, so mm-hmm. I kind of go back to that. Um, so multiple translations is, is really important. That's when the Bible app can be really helpful because mm-hmm. you don't have to buy. Do you, you have know, six Bibles? Six, Stuart, yeah. <laughs> I, I like to buy them, yes, but if yes, you don't yes. want to purchase 10 Bibles, yeah. um, you can maybe get, I would recommend getting two. Uh, you know, kind of physical Bibles, mm-hmm. one that is more on the paraphrase side and then ones that maybe is a little bit more literal. Um, and then a study Bible, which um, Chris and Gabe talked about. And this, I think this is the one similar to what will be. I yes. think so. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There she is. There she is. This is the NLT beautiful. study Bible. This is a great resource. Um, and study Bibles yep. kind of combine a lot of commentary with the scripture, mm-hmm. which is really helpful. And then, you know, moving from that, I think it's also really important to kind of incorporate other sources. Mm -hmm. So as you're reading the scripture, it's really helpful to, um, if you have questions, write those questions down. Like, you know, what does this word mean? Why why does Paul keep saying this? Mm -hmm. Uh, What does this phrase really mean? And so I think it's important to, you know, note those and then kind of search out, you know, answers. And Mm -hmm. there's a lot of different resources. One that I go to a lot is studylight.org. It's free. You can, you know, there's tons of commentaries that are on there for totally free. Um, and then, you know, one, one last kind of tool in the tool belt for me is, is just a, a, a basic word study. So it's really interesting if you look at, you know, just pick a word from this past weekend, you know, you could look at the word preach and then kind of look all throughout the New Testament when that word was used and how mm-hmm. and in what context. And sometimes it just, the word just kind of explodes in meaning and, and depth um, or a word like breath or spirit, yeah. you know, so you just kind of, and the more that you dig into that, you see the themes throughout the mm-hmm. scripture um, and you see kind of the, the breadth of it in, in kind of a new way and words help, help kind of guide that pathway. That's great. Thank you for all those resources. I think like, Um, and I'd be curious your thoughts, but I think studying scripture can be so intimidating for people. Mm. Mm. And like, why do you think that is? I mean, not that you have to answer for every person, (laughs) because I'm sure it's different for others, but I think like you just provided a really great 
list of resources, accessibility. Hey, here's how to do it so that it's not intimidating. And here's why it's like so important. But I'm curious, like why, why do you think people, this is intimidating for people so they don't even really start? Well, it's a big book. I mean, yeah. mm-hmm. you know, we don't yeah. we don't typically dive into books this big, right? Yeah. Just on our own. Yeah. So there's there's a lot there. Yeah, that's good. And then if you go into the Old Testament, which I love the Old Testament, mm. but sometimes you really need some help with you know some some cultural differences mm-hmm. that are a lot mm-hmm. different. So you read it and you're like, what? D- I, what in the world does this even mean? Mm-hmm. And then this feels very different from what I experienced life. And so I think it's, it, it, it can be intimidating because mm-hmm. of the, just the size of it. Mm-hmm. Um, and also just the, in, in some cases it's hard to understand what it's even mm-hmm. saying. Um, and then I think in the, in the church too, because we have, you know, entire schools devoted to mm-hmm. studying the Bible. Um, you know, there, there's a lot of, um, unfortunately, some elitist mentality of like, if, if you don't know these things, you shouldn't really engage with this book. Like, leave it to the professionals, the professionals. who've like been, we've, you know, we've been to school, we've studied the language, you know, but it, it, that's just foolish. And it's really, um, mm-hmm. I think it's sinful to, to categorize things that way. And, and, and it really keeps people from engaging with God on a real and personal way. Um, and it, it, it's destructive. Right. And I think when you grow up in a tradition that doesn't necessarily help you read the Bible, like mm-hmm. it's like you're with in one of those elitist places that only the pastor or the priest or whoever mm-hmm. reads and, mm-hmm. um, it's in a different language even, mm-hmm. um, it's really hard to get into it. And so the reality is it, it is written in English for us mm-hmm. to get to. Um, and yeah. we do need community around us to help um, bet- with the tools and community mm-hmm. to really begin to understand and unpack it. Mm-hmm. That's good. That's really good. So speaking of unpacking scripture, mm-hmm. the verse that Gabe and Chris, we really spent the first week talking about in this um, series was Romans 1.1. I'm going to read it. It says, this letter is from Paul, a slave of Christ Jesus, chosen by God to be an apostle and sent out to preach his good news. So I want to spend some time unpacking this verse well, first of all, like really talking about and kind of landing on who Paul was. Um, and I know Gabe talked about this in Matthews, but Paul has a pretty remarkable story. Mm-hmm. He was Saul, so he had a little name change later in life. Um, but he was a persecutor of the church, and he was a participant and an instigator of the death of many Christians. Mm-hmm. But then he encountered the resurrection, the resurrected Jesus um, on the way, on the road to Damascus, just, mm-hmm. just walking, minding mm-hmm. his own business, <laughs> just walking down the street. Um, but Stuart, can you tell us a little bit more about Paul, Saul's story from here? I think the thing that I love about Paul's story mm-hmm. is that the past doesn't disqualify what so God's going to do. Mm-hmm. All right, y'all, thanks for being here. That's, that's like mic drop. Mic drop. <laughs> I stole that from Chris. Yeah, <laughs> that's not mine. Yeah. That's not mine. He mm-hmm. preached it, um, but it's so true, mm-hmm. and 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 it's so true in in Paul's life, but it's true in our lives, um, because I mean, Paul he did some pretty bad right. stuff um, and stuff that you know he was not proud of, um, but God used him in such a mighty way mm-hmm. to to really become one of the greatest influences in the entire Christian world. Um, so it's just, it's just a reminder of God's power that, you know, there's, Mm -hmm. it's limitless to what he can Mm do in, in the lives of, of human instruments, you know? That's really great. I mean, you might've just answered this, but what does Paul's conversion tell us about God? Would you add anything else to that? God is just so patient Mm -hmm. and kind, um, because of, you know, God justifiably could have mm-hmm. said, okay, Paul, like that, that's, that's it. Like, mm-hmm. you know, you've done too much. Um, but he was just so, so patient in pursuing him mm-hmm. in a way that would, you know, captivate his heart mm-hmm. and change it. And that's something that only God can do and only the spirit's work can do. Um, and and so it's just a it's it's a miraculous display of God's um, goodness and kindness towards us. That's really great. 
I think we would have, or I would have disqualified a lot of people that God called, myself included. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. You know? yeah. So, and what do you, what does Paul's story mean for us? I think it's just incredibly encouraging and, mm-hmm. and hope filled mm-hmm. yeah. um, because, you know, what we see throughout Paul's life is just because he became a Christian doesn't mean that his life became easy. Yeah. It actually got a whole lot harder mm-hmm. um, with hardship and, mm-hmm. you know, heartache, just a lot of, of pain. Um, but he had a, a, a transformed vision of what life was about and so that is just as true for us no matter what we've done in the past um or the the hardships that we're facing or will face there's hope um and there's just a a, um a foundation of Mm -hmm. you know unshakable hope that's there amen amen so um gabe shared what his prayer was during this series and which I loved. And he said that his, his prayer, his hope that every single one of us who call ourselves followers of Jesus would be able to articulate what the gospel is to someone else. And I have a story with this, but I was in a small group right out of college, um, with my youth pastor and his wife. And every single week he chose somebody in the group, the group was like six people and he chose someone every week and he'd be like, Suzanne, what is the gospel? Mm-hmm. And you'd had to articulate it. Mm. And you knew it was coming every week. And you're like, is it my turn <laughs> to be asked? And it was so nerve wracking yeah. to me. And I, you know, I'd been a, a follower of Christ my, like most of my life at that point, but I was like so nervous. Mm-hmm. He was going to call me. I'm like, what is the gospel? You know, but it really like really caused you to, to pause and be like, what is the gospel? How would I say that to someone else? Um, so, I mean, maybe it was just me, but that question was like really intimidating. Yeah. And so I was curious, like, why do you think that question, what is the gospel is so intimidating for believers? I think because you, you don't want to say anything wrong. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you also don't want to say anything that's really confusing to someone where they're like, wait, yeah, that doesn't make sense. Yeah. Um, and then you have the whole like eternal thing, (laughs) you know, but it doesn't, you know, it doesn't all weigh on us, but there is this, you, you, there's, it's probably a a self, self inflated view of, you know, yourself, but, um, I think it, it, it feels like a lot. Yeah. We want to get it right. Well, yeah, you want yeah. To get I don't want. Right. I don't want to say something that's going to cause somebody to not understand. Yeah. Or I'm like, it's so complex. Like, right. how do I sum yeah. up what God has done for us? And I'm like overcomplicating it. Yeah. Or I'm like, well, oh, there's yeah. so many layers to this. So, uh, all right, that makes me feel better because yeah. I'm like, oh my gosh, it was like I was taking a test every week. What's the gospel? Yep. <laughs> well, Stuart, what is the gospel? <laughs> <laughs> how oh, now that we've <laughs> defined it as a test. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I thought you were going to skip this question. <laughs> how would you articulate the gospel? Yeah. Um, well, I, I always try and say it in the form of story. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, looking at kind of in the beginning, God created the world. He created it in a, in a perfect way, in the way that it was designed to run um, and be. And he created humans in his image. And Adam and Eve in the garden turned away from that, that perfect order and um, sin entered the world, and it entered the world in um, at a macro level um, with death and pain and injustice and um, all of the things that are broken in this world. And it also entered in a in a micro level um, in our own heart. Mm-hmm. And so there is a there is a deep um, pain and brokenness within each one of us. And and if the story ends there. Mm-hmm it's pretty hopeless. Mm. And so we, we look to when Jesus comes on the scene and God sent Jesus um, at just the right time, as it says in Galatians, um, to redeem us, to save us. And he did that by dying on a cross mm. for us, but he didn't just die. Um, he rose and he defeated death and sin and shame and all that is broken. Um, and that's also not the end of the story. He's coming again to restore all things back into the way that God intended them to be, to where there's no sin, there's no shame, there's no death, there's no tears. Um, and so that's, that's what we hope for, and that's what gives us hope in the, in the present and knowing that, that Jesus um, is the reigning king and he will reign forever. Mm. Amen. So Nicely done. <laughs> that was really great. <clears throat> 
I love that. I think one of the one of the things Good. when you were saying that, I think what sometimes I think we get stuck on he rose again and he took so therefore our sins are forgiven when we surrender our lives to him, but this, to continue and say he's coming again to restore back to the way God intended the world to be. Mm-hmm. Really um, I think it's we, we can't lose sight of that. Yeah. Because that's another part of the hope. It's good. Mm-hmm. It's really good. Yeah. And the gospel is defined as the good news. Mm-hmm. So it's that's yes. that's good news. That it is, is very good news. Great news. And so Gabe touched on this a lot, but good news is that Jesus is king. And that's mm-hmm. what you're describing. Mm-hmm. Um, Jesus is king. You are not king. I am yes. not king, thank God. Our political <laughs> leaders are not king. Yeah. Jesus mm-hmm. is king. And so, Stuart, how should this truth influence or, or how should it change our lives? Everything. Everything. <laughs> mm. um, everything we do is is a political move actually because we're Ooh, we're we're assigning <laughs> we're assigning kingship and lordship to something mm-hmm. um it's either going to be my success in whatever i'm trying to do um i'm, I'm ascribing lordship to that it's going to be in a maybe it's a political party or or leader that i'm hoping you know fixes everything um it's either in you know my family of putting all of my hope and trust into that and when we think about what Jesus really came to do is really to upend the entire power structure of the entire universe mm-hmm. and create a whole new political world mm-hmm. where he's king over everything mm-hmm. everything at a high level even down to you know in it literally in the ground of like you know how do things work he's mm-hmm. reigning over all of those things so um, it, it's a a really simple thing, but everything matters then. If mm. Jesus is king um, over all things great and small, um, then the little decisions that I make are either ascribing mm. lordship to right. m- something mm-hmm. or Jesus himself. Um, and so it's, it's, a, it's a dangerous business um, because we're, we're yeah. you know, continually faced with that question, who is king, yeah. who is Lord, and who am I giving that lordship and, and you know, obediently offering myself underneath that lordship or trying to take it for mm-hmm. myself? Yeah, that's really good. That's really good. What do you think is our, like, role and responsibility when it comes to this good news? Now that it, it's changed us, it's changed everything, everything matters. Mm-hmm. What do we then need to go out and do? I think it's really important to um, demonstrate what the gospel has done mm. in our lives and, and not just have this, mm. this knowledge that we want to pass on, along to people, Same. but to invite people into That's what the gospel, what the good news mm. has done in our own heart of saying, you know, before I met Jesus, mm. X, Y, Z. Mm-hmm. And then I met Jesus, and now you know this is this is my life. And so I think it's it's a um, it's a public display of of a living mm-hmm. faith. Um, kind of Suzanne, what you're talking about. Yeah. I, I do want people mm-hmm. to to know even before I say anything. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, this person's different. Mm-hmm. You know, when mm-hmm. I'm coaching a flag football team, I want parents to know. Oh, wow, that huh. There's something different about this person. They see the difference in us, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's um, and it's tied to love. It's mm-hmm. tied to kindness. It ties, to, you know, to all the ways that that only the spirit moves and works. Um, and that's what people, I think, really see and 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 want to resonate with because it's it is so foreign mm. because we're used to seeing brokenness. We're used to seeing pain and destruction. Mm. So when you see a, you, when you see love, when you see grace, compassion, mm-hmm. mercy, mm-hmm. those things are really attractive yeah. to people um, That's good. as they as they should be. Yeah. Right. That's yeah. really good. Yeah, it's a breath of fresh air. It's yeah, good. it's good. And our bottom line this week was that God always delivers a person to deliver a message to deliver a people. So I want to spend just our last few minutes really unpacking that because I feel like that's layered there but Mm -hmm. who is the person what is the message and who are the people in this passage I mean you know Paul yeah Mm -hmm. is the person um he's he's the person that God Mm -hmm. took 
you know, out of his circumstances delivered him. Mm-hmm. And then his the, the message, as, as Chris um, mm-hmm. talked about for a while, um, the message was for a lot of people right. yep. around the world. Mm-hmm. And so it wasn't just the immediate little circle that Paul knew about. Yeah. It was so much wider. So mm-hmm. Chris kind of outlined the, the three missionary journeys oh, and cool. just mm-hmm. a, a oh, neat cool. way to kind of see, okay, one person... God worked and moved in a mighty way, which is which is amazing because it's awesome. one life. Mm-hmm. But then that circle got bigger and oh, bigger and that. bigger. And just the importance of those circles cool. getting bigger. Like I think sometimes we're tempted to go, hey, here's my people and my mm. circle, mm. and I'm going to stay right here, and I want it to be good and holy and just, And but I'm going to stay right here. Mm. And the people, like it's about the people. Like how do you go out further if your circle is super tight? Yeah. yeah. And Chris... He he said that when when you're when God delivers you, it's it's not just for you; it's for another Amen. person. Amen. And so I think that's really helpful to think about, also in terms of discipleship yes. and ways that we want to impact, you know, the next generation or those around us, because it's it's not just my life at stake; it's also others that I want to, you know, invite into the story and invite into my story and and in the bigger story of, of Scripture. Amen. Well, thank you, Stuart, for this yeah. conversation, and thank you for being here and for your wisdom. Mm-hmm. Um, would you mind praying to close our time together? I would love to. Okay. Father, we thank you for the grace that you extend to us in the mm-hmm. daily life and in all of the ways that you show your love for us. And I pray that as we dive into your word in the coming months, would you reveal to us your character? Would you reveal to us your nature? And would we internalize that in such a powerful and transformative way? Would your spirit move us um, to proclaim the good news through our life, through our words, through our actions? And um, would we display love and kindness to a people that desperately need to experience your power? and your grace and your mercy. And we pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Stuart. Thank and thank you. you all for listening. You can find this episode wherever you listen to podcasts. See you next time. <laughs>